Hey, my name is Luke Fletcher and I'm the writer and cinematographer of Resilience. I've never made a video like this before, but I thought it might be cool to start doing on some of the cooler films that we do, just to have something to look back on and kind of a documentation of the process. And I think it might also give people a good idea of what it's like to work with us and just for anybody to learn from that also likes making short films and commercials and just kind of see how we do this weird job. Um, yeah. So Resilience started as a commercial for the Lancaster Children's Home, but any time that I can like tell a story, I'm gonna take advantage of that. Honestly, I was super intimidated to make a commercial about the Children's Home because it's a topic that I really knew very little about. So right away, I started just reaching out and seeing who I could talk to. I got in touch with James, who was a graduate of the children's home and it was just amazing to be able to like hear his honesty and him just tell me everything i was just like the stranger that called him up on the phone and started asking him the deepest possible questions about his life one could ask i got very inspired and like knew the film was going to be about him or at least include part of his story. But what I did know is I wanted the story to be just really focused in on one person and not a bunch of different people that have been to the children's home. It would have been super easy to just throw together a highlight reel of everybody having the best day ever and the children's home is awesome and just life's perfect. You know, that's just not real life. But I also didn't want it to just be like, oh, well now that you're at the children's home, everything's perfect. Um, I don't think that's a very interesting story and it's also not an honest one either. With only, you know, five, 10 minutes, you don't have time to just literally tell this story. And so I, I knew the pacing was definitely gonna be one of the biggest issues with the film. So that is what kind of brought along the idea of the running and having that be what links us up with Wardell. So we shot this on the Ursa 4.6K G2, which is the camera I own and absolutely adore. It's a poor man's Alexa Mini and I'm a poor man and I like the Alexa Mini and I think the Ursa just is the perfect camera. And then we shot on the Laowa 12 millimeter zero distortion lens. I don't know, I really wanted this to look like Lubetsky's work. I just think he's awesome. I just thought it worked really well for, you know, that tree of life, like coming of age kind of flowing camera. So that's probably like a super cliche thing to say. I love how much you can see in the background and that it's not just like, Ooh, this is your shot. It allows for some like really interesting framing. It allows you to really get up close and personal with the actor. I, th I think every actor was a little like thrown off by how close the camera was getting to them. I hate both of you! Yeah, good! Good! So it's probably pretty unorthodox to be the writer and the cinematographer, but that's just, I love being the cinematographer and I also really like writing. So then I'll get my super good friend, Jared Wood. I'll get like Oh baby. I deserve this. <laughs> to direct the films and he loves directing. I love being the cinematographer and it works out. We work super well together. I think it's really important to find people you like working with and then keep working with those people. I think it's the only way to be able to make films. You can't keep doing something that's this hard and also like not enjoy the people you're around. And also it just yields a better film because you know, when you get into a pickle and you get to that 14th hour. I think the coolest thing is when you are working a really long day and everybody should be really grumpy and upset, but everybody's just like on fire and still working really hard and because everybody just like loves the project that much and loves everyone that much. Like, it sounds like so like Disney the way I'm saying it, but it's really a special and it's the only way I could do it. For sure. Look at him waddle around. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that's enough about that. Let's dive into the film. So this first backwards running shot was actually supposed to be these like running in place shots that we did in slow motion. But everybody that watched the film in the first cuts said that looked really stupid and didn't look like it was running at all. I actually just kind of like stumbled upon this backwards running thing by just like moving my slider and I was like, oh, that looked kind of sick. Probably some kind of meaning you could put on it because he's running from the thing he shouldn't be running from. I don't know. There's probably 
There's probably something. So the film then goes to baby James, who's my daughter, Jane, actually. Um, I actually wrote her into the script before she was even born. So hopefully she doesn't hate me for making her a boy when she's older. So I found this location on Airbnb for $40. That's the nice thing about shooting in crappy locations is that they are super cheap to get. The bathroom is like exactly what I pictured. Um, I loved the tile and being able to shoot a light in through that window uh, was exactly what I was looking for. Um, I just like love the way the whole bathroom scene turned out. Kate Daly is such a talented actress and she just like killed it for that role. I'm more of, yeah, like staring at yourself as you do it. <laughs> so this is the actual Lancaster County Sheriff's Office that we were able to get for the film. So before we shot this film, we were already in talks with them about shooting a new recruitment video. So I just kind of asked, I was like, hey, this is what we're doing. Would you guys by any chance be down to just like give us like two officers and two cars and they were like yeah no problem sure this isn't fair i'm a good mother i'm a good mother <laughs> So this next scene is at my house and it's my daughter Rosie playing James now. She's pretty used to me filming her. So that's like, that's probably the reason she doesn't look at the camera that much and like think anything of it. So Rosie is a little piggy and to get her to like the actress Rachel, we just had Rachel keep feeding her cookies throughout the day. She probably ate like a thousand of them. And then Tim didn't feed her any cookies. So she didn't really like Tim. And we were hoping this would just subtly foreshadow their rocky relationship. The way you look at this ranch, you want to look at your, your mom in this scene, the way you look at this ranch bottle. Her okay? name is Rachel, by the way. Yeah, just think of her as a ranch. <laughs> <laughs> Kid stuff was just fun. We kind of just gave them an activity to do and then just let them play. And eventually, you know, they forget about the camera and they start just giving genuine lines. I'm not ready for this. Hold it on this side. Oh, hold on. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Also, kind of acting like a kid ourselves probably helped. What do you want for your 10th birthday? A guinea pig. Oh. Sometimes actors are really hard to work with on sets. Oh. See what I mean? So we only had Tim for one day. So we had him grow out his beard a couple weeks prior to shooting. And we shot the fight with Nico first. And then we had him shave and have the fight with Mason um, to kind of just show a passage of time. And then he goes and plays with toddler James. So it was just kind of an emotional journey for him that day, um, but he killed it. Now you can just stay there all night and you can think about what it's gonna take for you to grow up and stop acting like a child. You can sit there all night and think about why you need to grow up and stop acting like a kid. So Jennifer Yates came in for one day to do the makeup um, on James when he gets punched. I hate it in movies when somebody gets punched and there's like no mark. It's definitely really scary to switch up the actor, you know, three minutes into the film and, and hope that everything that the audience connected with on the first character, the younger version, translates over to the older character. You know, I don't know. I, maybe it does for some people, maybe it doesn't for others. Uh, that's just kind of like uh, one of the issues you run into when you're trying to tell a full coming of age, growing up story. So the bridge scene was the last day of shooting. Uh, we filmed the running first. Keep going, keep going, keep going. You got it, you got it. And then started around 10 p.m. But for the first like two hours of shooting, there was this train getting cargo put on it. And it was so loud and it was ruining every take and it was probably so hard on the actors because they just like had to keep doing it because we, we'd get halfway through and then something would happen and it would just be like, all right. But the, but the fact is I'm here. But eventually it finally stopped. And that's just like one of those things you can't, it's like, what do you do? You know, we can't stop a train, I don't think. We will always be here for you. I will always be here for you. I will never 
give up on you. This shot is one of the offices at the actual Lancaster Children's Home. Uh, we scouted it out and just found an office with a window that would let us key on the opposite side of camera. Um, kind of, you know, had those leaves coming in to make leaf shadows on the walls. And then we also shot a scene where James sees his room for the first time, but it didn't really add to the story much, so we just cut it out. So we couldn't show any actual shots of the kids at the children's home for legal purposes. So we reached out to a couple homeschool groups in the area to see if anybody would want to be extras in the film in exchange for pizza. And a lot got back to us and I'm just like so thankful for them. You know, they just helped it be that much more realistic. And then we looked at our crew who looked the youngest and that turned out to be Grayson and David. Uh, they stick out a little bit, but I think it works. So for the scenes at the children's home, we did the same thing that we did for younger James. Kind of set up the scene and then let him go at it. And they just start playing and it's, you know, it becomes just real. Spicy sweet chili. That's what they called me in high school. <laughs> Eventually, you just forget the camera's there. And it takes a lot longer to shoot and it takes a lot longer to edit, but it's the way to make anybody an actor is just like, make it real. So in this scene, we had Patrick, who is a real children's home employee, ask the kids what they wanted to do when they grew up. And when it came to Nico. I wanna help kids like us, like all you guys. And we were just like, oh yeah, that's pretty good. And then got a close up of it. This was shot at the Lancaster Bowling Alley. The children's home often takes trips here with the kids. And so the owners were nice enough to let us shoot there for free. So yeah, that about wraps us up for this film. I think I wanna keep doing this. I think I also wanna do like a more in-depth lighting breakdown of each setup. Uh, we didn't really get that much BTS, like all the behind the scenes that we have is iPhone footage, so. Now that I think about it, I think it would be better if the camera's on the other side. I agree, let's do it. Every single person on this film just like gave their all and was like meant to be on this film and that is and it was it's just so special that we got to do this and i just feel so grateful for everyone involved i just had so much fun and i think we made a really cool film thank you so much for watching and you know i don't know you could like like i'm i've 